Welcome back to Noob Cooking. Today we're going to make bao. We're going to start out by mixing three quarters of a teaspoon active dry yeast in with four cups of bleached all-purpose flour or I'm using Korean bleached flour which will make the bunch just a little bit whiter. Uh, regular all-purpose flour from here in the States is probably going to make your buns just a tiny shade yellow, uh, but they will taste exactly the same from what I found. Okay, now that we've mixed that together, we're going to go ahead and get about 500 milliliters of water and put on the dough hook here. Now you probably won't use all 500 milliliters. It's going to depend a lot on what the weather is like outside. Uh, I'm in Florida, so I used about 400 milliliters total of water when I put this in. Uh, it's not an exact science. I've used everywhere up to 500 milliliters. Now here you see me adding the water in. I'm, I'm actually adding it in slowly. You don't want to do it all at once or you're going to splop water all over the place, and I've done that before. And don't forget to lock your mixer down like I did. Makes for some exciting mixing, but a big mess. Now we'll let this go anywhere from, you know, two to three minutes mixing it up just till it really starts pulling away from the sides of the bowl on the mixing stand. And then you can pull it out and we'll put it on a uh, floured surface and we'll go ahead and knead that for about 10 minutes after we pull it out. But as you can see here, it's getting just about done. And now it is done. Uh, this dough's kind of neat. It has uh, a really, really elastic feel to it, sort of a dry dough. Now we just gently knead that for about 10 minutes like you would with any kind of a bread dough. All right, now that we've kneaded it for about 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and form it to a ball, just like you would with any other dough, just like bread or anything else. Form that into a ball and then put it into a pre-greased pan and then cover it up and let that set for about two hours. Uh, I just use Pam cooking spray on this particular uh, metal pan, uh, but you, you could use olive oil or anything you like. Just don't make it super oily or nothing that would stain the actual dough. All right, now that that part is complete, let's go ahead and divide our pound of ground pork into two, and we're gonna brown half of it. And we'll wanna make sure this is completely done. We're gonna brown this in the pan on medium high heat. It's gonna take about four minutes to do that. Here you can see I'm just taking the flat spatula and I'm just going ahead and breaking it up into small, small pieces. Uh, we want that filling to be pretty broken up and pretty smooth. Next thing, we're going to chop up all the vegetables. We're going to start out by first julienning the carrots. And then we're going to use a dice. We'll go ahead and chop those matchsticks, carrot matchsticks up into cubes. And then I give it kind of a little rough chop afterwards. We want these carrots to be chunked up. Uh, pretty small so that you know you don't get a big chunk of carrot in in your bun.
Now that we have all the carrots and julienne, we're going to do a Brunoise cut on it. Uh, that's going to take it down to a small dice. I had my timer going there. so. Now when you're doing a Brunoise, make sure it's, it's really, really important to keep your fingers arched back. Uh, this is one of those cuts on vegetables that you can really easily cut yourself, so do use a little bit of caution. Now I'm actually going just a little bit further than just cubing it up. I'm going to go ahead and, and give it a rough chop on top of that cubing. As you can see, that's going to make our carrots, you know, really, really fine. I chose to do it this way instead of just using a grater on the carrots because we want that little bite of texture in there, that, that little crumb. All right, now that we've got the carrots all chopped up, we'll go ahead and chop the scallions. Uh, we just want to chop these into really, really thin slices, uh, you know, as thin as you can comfortably get them. We don't have to uh, separate the whites from the greens on this particular application. We're going to use them whole the way they are. If you wanted to, you could probably, you know, if you were going to present this on a plate, uh, save a little bit of the greens back and then just, you know, sprinkle them over the top for decoration. Okay, here we're gonna chop up our inch and a half piece of ginger that we have. Uh, we just wanna make that a good rough chop. Um, I, I want it to be fine, but, but it doesn't have to be perfect. As you see here, it's gonna be a little bit finer than the carrots though. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna chop up one head of Napa cabbage. Um, you probably could get away with using regular head cabbage, uh, but it's not gonna have the same consistency or texture to it. And, and really, texture is what we really want here, that, that fine leafy after we get it uh, chopped up. As you see, that's a fine chop that we use there. So now we mix that all together in a bowl uh, that's going to be able to handle our half a pound of raw meat that we have left from our one pound of pork. And then we're going to mix in after this the pound, or the half a pound, excuse me, of the cooked pork that we have in there. The reason we did that is so that the, when it cooks, it will come together. To this, we're also going to add an egg, a teaspoon sesame oil, three quarters teaspoon chicken bouillon, one teaspoon Asian cook, one teaspoon oyster sauce and two teaspoons Asian cooking wine. All right, the easiest way to do this is just have your hands in there and go ahead and get this all incorporated until everything is, is homogenous. Uh, we want it to be a, a very smooth type texture. All right, now that we've got all those ingredients incorporated in this, we'll move on to getting the dough. We're gonna use what's called the window pane method for the dough. Uh, this is gonna help us get, you know, the, the really round buns. So go ahead and just start stretching in the middle until it actually tears apart and makes a hole. And now you've got kind of a round. Uh, this, this way, when it makes the, the snake, so to speak, you don't have tapered ends on it. All of your pieces will be exactly the same size. 
helps you with you know just a little bit quality although you'll see in the end here <laughs> none of my buns came out exactly the same size but you know we're we're, we're, we're learning together so well, there'll be mistakes made and there's nobody to blame but me all right now that we've got this stretched out here just go ahead and let it down on the board go ahead and pull it until it's a complete circle I'd say about two inches in diameter is what I went for and then go ahead and take your your uh, board scraper and go ahead and cut that in half and just set one side of it off and then I covered it up a little bit later on with a you know a moist towel all right now take your piece of dough and divide that up into uh, roughly I'd say four four pieces on each side. And this is going to give you relatively large buns. It's a little easier when you're first learning how to make these if you make them good and large. I have by no means perfected the assembly. In fact, just today I got in the mail a tool that does this automatically. I'll go ahead and try and get a link to that down in the, the description. That, that'll help you out a lot. You won't have to know how to roll these. But um, what we're going to do here is now that we've made it, we, we lay it on its side from where we cut it. So we've got cut side up, and we want to make sure that the center, in this particular case, unlike a pie dough, is going to be a little thicker. So we'll leave a little hump in the middle of dough, and that's going to hold the bottom together for us while it's being steamed so you know the ingredients don't run through. Now I didn't have to use anything on my cutting board to keep it from sticking. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have a little dusting of flour, but in this case, this dough is pretty solid, so it, it doesn't stick very, very well. All right, now the easiest way to do this without the little machine that I talked about earlier is just put it in the palm of your hand, put a little bit more filling in it than you would think, well, a lot more than you would use for like a ravioli or something like that. Uh, go ahead and set that in there, and then you will use your thumb on that same hand, and forefinger to bring it and pinch it together all the way around. And as you go around, you'll use your thumb to hold that filling in place. Now you wanna make sure that you don't let the filling, it's a little bit greasy, you don't wanna let it touch the top dough where you're trying to pinch it together, otherwise the dough is not going to stick to itself. So keep pinching around there and keep pushing that filling down with your thumb. Uh, try not to get any dough and stain the outside of it like I just did there with my thumb. Um, I'm making mistakes, so you don't have to. You're welcome. All right, as we get to the end, the last thing we're gonna do is pull that over, pinch it, and then give it a little twist. And that'll seal the bun up. So as you see, you got almost a non-perfect bun. Uh, they'll taste the same whether they're perfect or not. All right, next thing we wanna do is place them in a steamer. I put three of them on each level. So a total of six buns, and we let that steam for 15 minutes. All right, now it's been steaming for 15 minutes. We open it up and we've got shiny, fluffy buns. I'll cut one open here for you so you can take a look. And there we have it. Not only tasty, but pretty darn good looking too. All right, again, if you liked it, please subscribe. Thank you.